Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Rights. Today we're going to be reviewing Princess Souls by Alexander Christo, which I received an advanced ebook copy of from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year because I completely adored To Kill a Kingdom back when I read the arc in 2018, and I think that was one of the books that sparked my love for fairy tale retellings. However, four years later, I no longer agree with the majority of the points in that review and the things that made me fall in love with the book have faded and reading Prince of the Souls really reminded me of the flaws. I think it's going to be difficult for me to write a detailed review of the book without comparing it to To Kid a Kingdom so I'm just going to commit to the comparisons. Prince of the Souls is promoted as a Rapunzel inspired fantasy romance but I would not recommend picking up this book if you're looking for a retelling. Our main character Celestra has long hair which is cut off early on in the book and she is living in a tower for the first handful of chapters that she narrates. She also has a standoff against her evil mother in the finale. For me, this is the extent of the similarities. So yes, you could describe it as Rapunzel inspired, but it's incredibly loose inspiration, especially in comparison to many of the fairy tale inspired works that are popular right now. Both books begin with a teenage female main character leaving a toxic home environment and meeting a charismatic male main character and his slightly less charismatic best friend. In Prince of the Souls, Celestra is joined by her own charming best friend, so the two male and female characters can be coupled off nicely by the end of the book. Both books spend time travelling on a boat to a port city location, which might be the same city, but it's been so long since I read the first book that I no longer remember that detail. During this time there is a lot of hatred between the main characters that is a lot stronger than reasons I can justify and some banter as we begin a slowish burn, kind of enemies to almost lovers arc. Prince of Souls has some of the travelling and banter in a hot air balloon which I generally found to be an exciting addition to a fantasy world. Both books arrive at the third location and begin a final journey to find the object that the male main character has been hunting for years. There is some kind of argument between the main characters about hidden identities or secrets and then both books end with the female main character confronting her toxic mother. The books are promoted as being part of the same universe but that was actually one of the elements that I found different and enjoyable. There is very little, if any, overlap between the locations and there are no cameos from the To Kill a Kingdom cast that I noticed. I like that Prince of the Souls could stand on its own in a sense and could be enjoyable for readers who are completely new to the author's work without expecting appearances from another book. I was going to spend some time here talking about the character dynamics but I don't think I have anything to add that hasn't already been covered. The female and male protagonists are very similar to the ones in To Kill a Kingdom. There are fewer crew members this time so the side characters had more room to grow although I don't feel they added any substance to the plot other than comic relief and fleshing out the main characters backstories. There is a lot of banter and very few serious or emotional moments to add some dimension to their personalities. I do think that Princess of Souls is superior out of the two books although I don't think any book can top the majesty of To Kill a Kingdom's opening line. The plot itself also hits more of my niche interests and I was a lot more invested in the main character's arc even if I found her a little bland as a character. There were also some descriptions of a sentient haunted forest that tugged at my soul as horror influences and forests in general are very exciting to me. In summary, if you've already read To Kill a Kingdom, you've pretty much already read the majority of Princess of Souls. I would not recommend picking up the latter unless you haven't read the former or adored it with your whole heart. However, ignoring any other books, Prince of the Souls was an enjoyable fairy tale inspired adventure and slow burn romance with an enemy to lover dynamic. I rated this book as three stars on Goodreads, but I would more accurately rate it as 3.5 stars, mostly for the haunted forest. That is all I have to say about Prince of the Souls today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.